Hello plant lovers, it is Matthew in Melbourne welcoming you back to my channel and today a humble, well, fabulous little orchid which we will get to in a minute. But first, I do post every week so feel free to subscribe and hit the notification bell so that you can know exactly what adventure I am going on each week. This, ladies and gentlemen, is, as you might have guessed, a terrestrial orchid that is native to South Africa and it is called Denoglottis longifolia. Perhaps long means that it has long foliage. Anyway, I bought this as a tuber last year and it was quite small and I really didn't expect it to flower because often these things take a couple of years to sort of beef up their size before they're ready to flower. But look, it surprised me with this beautiful bloom. So let's have a little look at this orchid because it does have a glorious future and I know it might look a little insignificant, but I can attest to the fact that given the images of this I've seen, it is gonna clump up and form the most fabulous specimen. And it's really easy. Okay, so first things first, there we are. As you can see, it has this spike of really beautiful lilac flowers. The spike continues to grow through the autumn period and these flowers then open sequentially as the spike gets taller. It's an autumn flower and here in Melbourne, it is mid autumn. And I'll show you where I am right now. I'm in Melbourne, Southeast Australia, and we are described as a cool Mediterranean climate or sometimes a warm temperate, depends <laughs> who you're reading. But essentially we have cold wet winters that don't freeze and dry hot summers that can also be wet and not hot but you know what I mean essentially the trick is though we don't freeze at winter so kind of equivalent to a zone 10 in the US and parts of southeast England now this orchid is endemic to South Africa there are many similarities between the climate of uh, parts of South Africa and parts of southern Australia so a lot of plants actually do very well in our climate that are native to South Africa and this being one of them so it is a terrestrial and I have a bit of a soft spot for terrestrial terrestrial orchids. There are lots of species of them in Australia as well and I've got a few of those in pots so we'll see if they do anything. I made a video about Chinese and Japanese ground orchids which I'll link below. Now they are a bit showier and they've been hybridized to quite a large degree so you get plenty of flower size and options but this one is a species orchid so this is as it occurs in the wilds of South Africa. So some details then it grows at quite high elevations and it is described as cool to intermediate. Now my climate zone here I would say is cool cold intermediate depends on the sort of microclimate conditions you get but as it is a terrestrial orchid um, this one grows outdoors all the time for me and manages pretty well, but we'll get to those details in a minute. So first cab off the rank, it is a lithophyte. So it tends to grow in rocky crevices and it forms quite large clumps. It's completely deciduous. So it loses all its leaves in the warmest parts of the season. So spring, summer, and it starts to sprout uh, late summer, early autumn. The, the leaves, the green leaves, and then the flower spike appeared for me just about at the beginning of autumn. And it should give me, I would say, quite a few weeks of continual bloom. So there's lots of buds across the top of the spike there, and it's only just started to flower down here. So it's gonna go on and on. This spike at the moment, I'd say, is about 30 centimeters, which is about a foot, and it can get a little bit taller than that to about 35 centimeters or a foot and a half, essentially. So. Interesting, isn't it? It's very beautiful. Now, I can't wait for this to clump up. As I said, it was just a baby tuber. So I'm very impressed with you, Orchid, that you decided to bloom so soon. But hopefully it will bulk up and I'll get multiple growth points um, as time goes on. So it's a lithophyte. It's Southern African. It's deciduous during summer. It does most of its growing then in autumn. But underneath the soil it does do its feeding i suppose in the spring and summer period so that is when it gets most rainfall in its native habitat so that's when the bulb will start to grow and start to produce the energy that can send up the flower in autumn so the thing is with this is that it does need to be watered in spring and summer now here in melbourne i would imagine our rainfall is pretty similar to the south african environment that this comes from so it's not something i water however it's in a terracotta pot I'm a terracotta pot kind of guy, so it can dry out quite quickly. And one of the things about this and most terrestrial orchids is not a good idea to let the tubers dry out completely. However, it is also not a good idea to let them get really wet and mushy because they will rot on you and that's easy to do. So it's a fine balance. In winter in Australia here, I am 
just keeping my eye on it. So we've had a period of torrential rain for the last five days and I just put this under shelter so it didn't get rained on. Normally though, I would leave it out in the elements. And if I'd planted it, which I could, I would just put it in a very free draining spot so that it wasn't gonna be standing in water for too long. And the medium it is potted into is a pretty generic mix for me, um, but it's very free draining because it's a lithophyte and doesn't want to stay in mushy soil. It's essentially just a regular potting mix that I have really loosened up with some sand and some little pieces of uh, pumice stone, which are great for aerating your soil. And I think because it's a lithophyte, you know, it wants to be near a bit of rock. So the other conditions are it likes dappled sunlight, not full sun. So you don't want to fry it out in the sun. Like most bulbs, which do like full sun, so that can be a bit confusing. It doesn't love the full sun. It needs dappled but bright indirect light. So if you imagine that it's growing at the base of a canopy, so there's gonna be other larger plants and trees growing above it. So it gets filtered in direct light. Again, watering wise, as with most lithophytes, although this is terrestrial, it is gonna get water passing through its environment quite quickly and draining quite quickly. And that is the trick, I think. Keeping it moist, but not wet. Keeping it a little on the drier side in winter, but allowing that moisture to drain out so that it's not sitting in a soggy medium. Other than that, I think it's absolutely so low key. I literally just left it in a shady spot in the garden and ta-da, it sprang for me. And I can't wait for the tuber to expand in this pot and for me to get multiple points next year. So I'll keep you up to date with that and hopefully it will happen. The only other vital piece of information, <laughs> no fragrance. And then I guess the only downside with deciduous terrestrial orchids like this is that when they are deciduous, there's nothing going on. So you just have empty pots. So you do need to make sure that you label it well so you know what is going on. And I do tend to write on my labels dry winter or deciduous or whatever so that it's sometimes easy to forget the peculiarities of each orchid. So if you just write it on the label, you're not gonna forget that this is a fabulous orchid that has just gone dormant and doesn't want to be drenched in winter. And I guess then temperature wise, it's a high altitude plant in its native habitat, so it can take cool temperatures. Uh, I don't know if it's going to thrive in freezing temperatures. So if you are somewhere that has colder winters that tend to freeze more, I would use this as a potted specimen and just follow the same care instructions in terms of water and light, but don't allow it to stay outside all year if it's gonna get a deep freeze, because I'm not sure that it's gonna love that. And fertilizer wise, I just put a couple of grains of slow release fertilizer in the medium when I pot it up, and then I will just repeat that application every spring. So here we are. My terrestrial orchid collection grows with this lovely South African species called Stenoglottis longifolia, and I couldn't find out what the steno or the glottis means. Longifolia, I guess, means long flower, but who knows? It was named, I think, in the 1830s, and there was lots of exploration around botany in South Africa at that point, so I'm sure it was named after someone or whoever discovered it, but anyway. There's a secret we won't know. But in the meantime, it's a very simple orchid to grow and you are gonna end up with a beautiful specimen once you get multiple growth points. So you're gonna probably need a couple of years to get to that point. Good idea to buy them in spring or summer when they're dormant, easier to ship the bulbs and you're not gonna damage any growth points at that point. So there we are, that is my quick one-on-one. -on -one. I just wanted to share it with you because it's so beautiful. And terrestrial orchids are a little left of field. So if you've got the space and the time and the inclination, they're not that showy, but they're really fantastic. And they just do their own thing. It's kind of like a bluebell. So there you go, plant lovers, my lovely South African terrestrial orchid doing its thing. Thank you very much for watching and I will be doing my thing next week again. So do hit subscribe and see whatever it is that I might come up with. See you then.